to um, make a date to have the workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to, that's fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it would be a while before we go. How about the moratorium? We've got that back. So I think, yeah, it's the noise ordinance we're waiting for. Yeah. if they have information we can have it when we make our decisions I stuff. could change it to do it like the county they do it before and they do it after Perfect. they have a privilege of the floor like right after they actually have it first right after the vote perfect I would appreciate that okay I think that's great just we'll just include that in future agendas and that way people will know that they have a chance okay. to, to speak if they have anything they want to bring up before yeah, we absolutely. do it so then I'll, we'll have it right after the discussion part and Right after the roll call. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. I guess it's just the three of us. I haven't heard from Doug or Charlie. No. You guys opposed to starting, or you want to wait? No, I think we're past 4:30. We're okay. good. Let's go. We're I'd like to call the meeting to order. Yeah. The pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. it up to privilege of the floor. If anyone has anything they'd like to say. Mary? Um, on the website, could you put the dog word this telephone number? Okay. I do have a packet prepared for that, so when we're in the meeting, if you don't mind, I'll do it all then. Oh, okay. okay. I do have something prepared for you. Just, I don't want to cover the town hall. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I like it too. Anybody else? Brian? Yeah, I could be mistaken here, but a while back in Cedarwood, I believe that's the firm, they were inspecting 
the Harris House. Right. And they made a suggestion to cover our or cover ourselves, or actually the town, by putting caution tape around it, you know, in case, you know, just you know, put, open up for lives, you know, lawsuits, you know, and someone gets hurt over there. And then I think it's, what, two years ago when they were here? Uh, I don't know. Before so me, I know. Yeah. They had caution tape on the on the ramp and the deck, I know. There used to be caution tape there. I, I didn't see it, so that's oh. why I brought it Yeah, there used to be. Okay. Maybe no trespassing would be better. Okay. Mary? You see the wood chest now. What? Are they still testing all the water everywhere or what? They do still test, yes. Each house? Um I think they I think they test the homeowners if the homeowners want it, but I'm not sure on that. I think they reach out to them, they schedule it, and then they test. Do they test the brook out here? I don't know if they test the brook. I doubt do they get do. Charged? That. Do we? Are you getting charged every month for it? For the brook or for the homes? For any of them. Is Cedar Brook, how often do they charge them? I think they do quarterly. Quarterly? I think it's quarterly. And what are they charging for? Uh, I'd have to look it up. It would probably be for sodium and. Yeah, but where do they test? Are they testing how many areas? And I think we'd have to go back to the bills and look at it. I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know where right. it is. They're, they're testing the homes, not not the brook. Or they don't test the brook anymore? I don't think so, no. no. They test here, and they test uh, the, I test the highway. Yeah. They test the, the um, eight locations, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. You just said they're testing the homes? Yeah, the people's homes. Some of them. Some people the don't water, want them to, but. Just clarify, the water in their wells that were pre-existing, the water that's coming in through the water system, or are they going around the house testing, I don't know, ground or whatever? I, I think they're testing the wells that were contaminated. Right, I think okay. so too. The, the, the purpose of the testing is to determine whether or not the salt levels are declining. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, I guess. Right. So I'll need for clarification. Right. The, the purpose being that at some point in the future, the salt levels will decline to a level where the town municipal water system will no longer be needed. And people can go back to their their original well, or their wells or a private well. So has it been declining? I can't tell you that off the top of my head. I don't yeah. I haven't seen the numbers in a while, but mm -hmm. I just my experience in my prior history. Um, salt levels take a long, mm -hmm. long time to decline. We're probably looking at decades or something like that now. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the current numbers are, but we could find that out. Yeah, and, and whether they're testing the brook out here, if it's going down, staying level? I doubt they're testing up. the brook because honestly, that wouldn't tell you much because that's gonna, the levels in the brook would fluctuate depending on the amount of flow in the stream. <laughs> so it's gonna get diluted from whatever groundwater might be seeping into it. So, I mean, I, I doubt they're testing that. I think it's, the impact of groundwater is more significant and I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even sure that there's a, a threshold level for a surface water like that. I would have to go back and look at the state water quality standards. It's probably, it's more of a drinking water concern in groundwater and that's, Really, doing the stream wouldn't really tell you anything useful because um, we're really concerned with the impact of the groundwater source because that's people's drinking water source. So. I have the records going back to when I started here. I can get them and give you a copy or show you what they're doing. Mm -hmm. you know. Does that answer your question? Some of it, right? <laughs> Some of it. Some of it. Yeah. I was wondering if the money was going down or it's still going up. The cost per year, the cost per year, if they're going up or down or stay, stay. I think the price per test is the same. Yeah. Yeah. But then that is going up, so I'm sure it will. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? So then the first thing I think we'll do is, is payment of the claims. Does anybody want to introduce that? Uh, Ed? Ed introduced it. I'll second it. Okay. Okay.
Total of abstract eight in the general fund for August 16th, 2023 is $24,168.18. And the total of abstract eight for the highway fund for August 16th is $32,536.17 for a total of $56,704.35. Does anybody have any questions on the claims or anything like that? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. And we were fortunate this um, at this meeting now we do have several bids on the truck that the highway put out to bid. So okay. said, okay. Yep. I mean, this form is non-collusive bidding service. It was not something we required. He just offered that. Right. Correct. I, I didn't, couldn't read that. Yet. <laughs> we don't. We don't send them anything other than the newspaper okay. article. Because that appears to be the highest bid. It's not here to see that it finally is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that we accept the bid from Joseph and I can't even begin to pronounce the last yeah. name um, for six thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. JSSJR Enterprises Incorporated is on the Yeah. That's it. 
I'll second that approval. I'll second that. Ed, Ed seconded it. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Center now. Um, you've got this resolution for the code enforcement officer. You want to do that first? Sure. That done? Okay. Next resolution is to hire a code enforcement officer. Does anybody want to bring that to the floor? I will. Doug? Okay. And a second? Uh, Ed? Okay. Ed seconded. Okay. Whereas towns may appoint an enforcement officer who is in charge of enforcing the codes, ordinances, rules, regulations, and local laws, and whereas the town of Thurman is in need of someone to ensure compliance with duly adopted regulations in the town of Thurman, and whereas the code enforcer duty shall include enforcement of any codes, ordinances, rules, regulations, or local laws, and will be authorized to issue citations or file formal complaints, be it resolved, the town of Thurman is accepting letters of interest for the position of code enforcement officer. Salary is to be determined by the level of experience and will be on a per diem basis. Letters of interest can be submitted to the town clerk at P.O. Box 29, April, New York, 12810, or dropped off in person to the office of the town clerk. Any in letters of interest submitted will be presented to the town board and discussed at the next town board meeting in September. Do you have any? Um, I'm in favor of creating the position. I did have a conversation with Charles Wallace from the Warren County uh, Code Enforcement Office. Um, the one thing that I got out of our discussion was we want to be careful that we don't suggest that we are going to be enforcing the New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code because that's been delegated to the county. Right. So that's if we true. create this position, we want to exclude that okay. because that's their domain. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure they do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the other that. thing that I think we need to look, I think at some point we need to probably come up with a list of which things he's going to actually enforce. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to do the noise ordinance and then we're going to have things to do with short-term rentals. But at some point in the past, I know the town adopted a sanitary code and I think we may need to revisit that. Mm -hmm. um, the county issues permits and does inspections on new septic systems. But in my discussion with Mr. Wallace, um, they don't normally address complaints for issues of, you know, like a failing system or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we may have to talk to him some more and figure out how we're going to do it. But our code enforcement officer may be tasked with um, issuing citations for failing septic systems to get people to bring them into compliance. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we probably need to include in this. And I think we probably need to revisit our sanitary code because my recollection, having talked to Dave Kenyon, who was on the board at the time, yeah. I don't believe that what the town adopted was appropriate because in my experience in my previous life, um, the minimum sanitary code that's applicable statewide is the Department of Health's um, Appendix 75A. Yeah. And what they adopted actually didn't comply with that. That's the minimum required in the state. So at some point, I believe we probably will have to address that and then decide whether or not we're going to task this new code enforcement officer position with enforcing that. I think he'll so. need a binder of all of our local laws and yes. ordinances so that he knows what to go off of, right. and that will be part of it. Mm -hmm. And so then we'll probably um, have to do a, like a workshop, figure out what we want to change, upgrade, right. or whatever. So one of the things I recall, you had mentioned, Deb, that um, when you talk to somebody from the sheriff's department, as far as enforcing the noise ordinance, mm -hmm. they would only do that based on a citation from a code enforcement officer. Yeah. I guess my question is, at some point, we'll have to figure out how that's actually going to work. Are we actually going to get a book with the tickets in it so they can actually write them out? Right. I mean, how are we going to 
actually make that happen. So that's that's something we can talk about in the future. Yeah. But when I when I did a little research on it, I have all copies of um, that type of thing, like oh, violation good. appearance ticket, order to remedy something, enforcement Perfect. action. They have these out there, you know that. He could have a clipboard, Great. a stack of these, mm -hmm. and um, you're ahead of me. Perfect. <laughs> so that's good. So we have a resolution to hire them. We'll get the letters of interest. We'll get the book of all our laws put together, and then we'll that'll give us till the September meeting. By then, we should be ready, I would think. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as this is, it's just we put it in the paper, or do we advertise it just on our website? What do we do for the letter? Jeez. Well, we can put it on the website. Um, yeah. It depends on how uh, legally we can get in touch with the post office. They'll, they're doing legals without a problem. Okay. So I guess I think they're they're doing your advertising. Okay. Do you want me to put? I think maybe our website and Thurman app, like the Thurman happenings, maybe, or just get yeah, it you out mean there. Our Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not do it in the post office. I don't know if we legally have to. Yeah. It's just a letter of interest. It's not really, you know. And they don't. All right, so we'll put it on the. Put we it have a comment, there. or a couple oh. of comments. <laughs> Keith? Just from what you read in the um, paperwork there that you had, almost sounded like it was open ended for the amount of expenses could cause in a month. And just wanted to point that out that that's what I gathered from it. So, some consideration for that so you don't get swamped with a very high bill from you know, month to month. I mean, maybe, um. maybe nothing. But would be hard to limit how many violations there would be. I'm just yeah. saying that it's something you might want to consider. There'll have to be a I budget. I understand that that could happen. Mm -hmm. I, I agree that it could happen. So yeah. as opposed to doing a per diem basis, oh, maybe okay. we should do a salary position. Possibly, what do you guys think about that? Possibly word it that not to exceed this month and this much per month. Or, you know, again, yeah. Several of them do, yeah. but a lot of them are more full-time positions. Full -time. Right. Basically, like like Pretty George and Bolton, they're yeah. full-time. And they do zoning yeah. too. They don't just do what, what we're doing. I mean, Keith's point's well taken. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. how do you do a per diem basis? Do you do it per violation or by hourly rate, or how do you do it? Well, I mean, be on call for twenty-four hours. Yeah, should we should we think about doing a salary position? Well, when we find someone, we'll discuss it. I think what they would want, because salary is fine, but if you are never called, if you go three months with no calls, and, and it would have been cheaper to do it this way, I don't know. We'd have to think how many calls you yeah. think we're really going to get. Well, I think, you know, once again, we haven't fully defined what their duties are going to be, but I, yeah. I know in conversations with the assessors, there are things that they periodically get asked to do that are not within the domain of the assessor's office. Right. And it should be a code enforcement officer signing certain documents and paperwork right. because they're not, they don't have the actual legal authority to sign some of these documents. A code enforcement officer would. Yeah. So there are duties that, the scope of their duties may expand beyond what we're kind of thinking about today. Mm -hmm. So. So I'll put, I put salary or hourly, discuss pay options, and when we have our workshop, we'll, we'll do that. I think that's probably. That's what I'm saying. Is that, yeah. You know, this is, this is new to you guys. Yep. This is new to the town. There's things that are going to pop up like this. Right, yep. right. And, you know, like I said, you don't want to get a big bill one month and have, you know, and go over the salary and have nothing for months and months and months. Yeah, for sure. It's just, yeah. Things for you guys. Mary, you had something? No, I was just going to ask you how, you how you, when you wrote this up, what was your idea of pay? 
for the, what were you going to budget, where were you going to get the budget from, what was your idea, and are you ahead of yourself if you don't have what you expect them to do and it cost before you say, oh, step up here and say, I'm going to be a code enforcement officer. So maybe it's appropriate to table this for tonight and come up with a scope of duties first. And a cost. Yeah. And a cost. Well, what you expect to spend. Ryan? Oh, Joyce? Joyce? Uh, <clears throat> will any of the old ordinances that was in place be brought up today, or will you have to go through a process of making new ordinances? We'd have to, we're going to look at them, and if they need to be updated, we'll do that. And if they're okay the way they are, we'll leave them. But we're going to have to first get a binder of all the local laws, go through all of them, make sure that they're available for whoever's gonna do the code enforcement. They need to know what the rules are, so do we. I mean, we probably have laws on the books. I know for me, I've only been here a year and a half. I don't know what's everything on there. So, so you're asking for letter of interest in next month, you're thinking about hiring a code enforcement officer. When the letters of interest come in, my first question is gonna be, what are you gonna pay me? It might not be interest. Yeah. What local law ordinances you're going to have them do, or what kind of pay you're going to give them? If I was putting a lot of interest in, I'd want to know what the pay was. I agree. I think all of these points are well taken. I, I think I would make a motion to table this motion okay. until we define this, the scope of the, the duties and come up with a you know budget for what we want to pay for this. Okay. So I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Doug seconded it. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. But now we have laws on the books and no enforcement, so are we going to rely on the sheriff for that? You can't. <laughs> you can't <laughs> rely on the sheriff for that. Well, we won't do anything we until you have a code put in a different house. salary mm -hmm. open or open for discussion or we're trying to how much do you want to do this job? And we have no idea what, you know, how to, how much to pay or who to pay. You yeah. know, it's going to be. You probably have to want to look at the local laws and the ordinances. Like somebody actually just came in and asked about junk cars, and we got dogs, and yeah. so we got several ordinances. Um, that wouldn't they oversee those? Yeah. yeah. So I got them. So when you decide you want to look them over, I, I got. Yeah, I think I think we need to do our homework. Get get together all the ordinances and local laws that we want to task this individual to enforce, and get an idea of what we think the amount of work is involved, and then kind of back into a salary that we might want to offer, and come up with a budget code to cover. It. So, okay, okay, we tabled this. So we tabled it. Yeah. So now we'll do the same turn. Okay. okay. We're going to discuss the Reynolds Cemetery and what we're going to be planning to do about that. So this is not a resolution. This is just a discussion. Just a discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Main situations that we have at the Reynolds Cemetery is not being 100% clear of where the boundaries are, nor do we have 100% confidence in the map that shows where the people are buried. And it's been brought to our attention that there may be some people buried in right of way. And we also have a few papers that are certificate of burial privileges that were never put on this map. And we don't know how many of these are out there. There may be some with the same section row and lot number on them and we're not sure. Mm -hmm. So we've been having discussion with Sue and Tuck and between us about what to do on this. Um, It could be a bit of a legal liability if we've got lots sold to people where there's someone already there. 
So that's what our discussion is to figure out what do we want to do about it. Um, I talked to Lexi at Real Property about these boundary lines. There is a right of way and there's a road here, but it doesn't appear to be on cemetery property. So we don't know if there's a 50 foot right of way at the end of that cemetery. Um, I think that one of the only ways we're gonna be able to know for sure is to have it scanned and remapped like this, but accurately. And I would really love to have somebody who's interested in a cemetery committee so that we can do this over because this is not accurate. Um, we also would like to put it out there for anybody who has documents like this to come in and let us know. Hopefully there'll be a committee that can square this away. There's, there's also this option that, that you have here that we all have a copy of, and I, don't, I think all of you have a copy of it. It's a um, surveyor who's willing to do the survey mm -hmm. and identify where there are people buried. And so can I kind yeah, of talk sure, about that ahead. a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. So at the last board meeting, um, we talked about this. And at that time, we weren't even aware of all the records that were available. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, we've become aware of these records. And there's a lot of, it's, it's not clear how accurate they are. And so at the last board meeting, I was kind of tasked with getting uh, proposals from surveyors and I contacted one who I've had contact with in the past and he offered a proposal, written proposal to the town um, that essentially says that um, he will do a full-fledged boundary survey of the property which includes researching all the records associated with the, the, the cemetery and all the adjoining properties to identify any potential conflicts with any of the boundaries or right-of-ways or anything like that. Um, he will also mark the boundaries if there's monumentation that's missing. Um, we do know, Ed and I have both been up there and looked, and there's uh, an old survey that calls for a couple of iron pipes. We found some of those, but there's other corners and lines that aren't clearly marked. So anyhow, for $1,630, he's offered to do a full survey, marking all the corners and the boundaries of the property, including the right of way, and identify any potential conflicts with that, where people may have gone across the boundaries or uh, <coughs> the allegations of burials that may have taken place in the right of way that's deeded to a, an adjoining property owner. So that, that price is $1,630. In addition to that, he's indicated that he will survey and locate all of the plots within the cemetery, all the headstones, all the corner markers and everything on a full-fledged survey map um, for us for an additional price of $1,630. So you're talking $3,260 um, to get everything surveyed. We would know where everything is, all the existing information, and then we would have actual defined boundaries of it and all of the, the, the locations marked. Um, they he did indicate that if there's any additional work beyond what he's proposed in his scope of services, there's hourly rates for, for that additional work if there's something else that we need him to do beyond what he's proposing. But it's, it's all laid out in his proposal here. And we can get proposals from other surveys, but honestly, in my experience, this seems like very reasonable price for the amount of work that's gonna be done. And my goal and hope in all of this is that once this is done, we'll have a base map that will have all of the existing plots and the existing headstones, corner markers, everything laid out on it. And all of the vacant, well, let me back up, all of the ones with existing headstones and stuff, but all the ones that have been sold, <coughs> go through the records and get that information. And then all the um, available plots that are up there too. So we'll have a an accurate survey map that shows all of that information. And then at some point, whether we talk about having a cemetery commission or we task somebody else to do the job, that they'll have a map to work from 
so as we sell plots in the future, they'll be accurately located. We'll get people in the right plot and not bury them in the wrong location. Or if there are problems with plots up there, which we believe there are because yeah. that information shows where there were some burials done that are in two different sections. And from what I've been told, anecdotally, if they were digging and they hit a rock, they swooped it over a little bit. So that kind of created some problems there too. So I think for the cost of doing this seems pretty nominal to be able to resolve all of those issues and at least get us on a firm foundation with accurate information. Are you talking about just one cemetery here? We're talking about the Reynolds Cemetery, which is the active cemetery in town. We have a number of other cemeteries in town, but to my knowledge, I mean, somebody else can chime in here. I don't know that there are burials taking place in any of these other, I, I would call them historical cemeteries. I, I know <laughs> for lack of one, I know there's more than one. I just yep. want there's, to clarify that. There's at least 17 that we know of, although yeah. some of them are just like there's an individual. Now you're saying 17, that's like a lot. Well, well yeah, <coughs> there's one right. active cemetery. The other yeah. ones have some, like maybe one individual buried someplace and it's a family plot or something <coughs> like that. I'm not proposing that we have all of them surveyed. Just, well, this is, seems to be the active one, unless, are there burials taking place in any of the other ones? that? Yeah. Yeah. So Excuse me? Cameron Cemetery has burials. Cameron. Okay. Okay. Oh, off Huber Road. Huber. Um, okay. So. Baptist Church on Huber Road. Baptist Church. That's owned by the church, That's though. That's owned by the church. Well, yeah. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what they said. Yeah. Okay. Most of them are small families. Some have one person buried, three people. Right. Yeah. I've got the list of all 17. Ones. Joyce, you had a comment? You had a comment? Uh, are you going to make up a set of rules and regulations like I have a copy of that was given to me when we did the original with uh, Robin and John Schroeder? We were given a set of rules and regulations. Now there is a lot of broken rules on planting trees up there, mm -hmm. which as you can see with the old cemetery, uh, all it does is grow roots and dig them up and it's a mess. Yeah. Now, in retrospect to people that wasn't ever given these rules when they had the burial, they planted trees, and it's a nice gesture. But in turn, you shouldn't have somebody go up and remove all those trees without notifying the people who have the lots, because it's just common sense. It's something sure. they should be aware of ahead of time, and perhaps they would like whatever is there themselves yeah. to take home. I, I think that's one of the things we need to talk about is who's going to be in charge of administering all this. Do we reinitiate the cemetery commission? Do we just have a single commissioner? Do we task somebody in town government to, to handle all this? I mean, that's something that's open for discussion and we need to figure out. Um, along those lines, I did talk to um, David Alexander, who's with uh, the Alexander Funeral in Warnford. Um, he talked to me about a number of things. Um, in Warrensburg, they had a cemetery commission, which is a nonprofit, and they disbanded it and they turned everything over to the town because as a nonprofit, they had to follow a certain number of regulations and there was inspections and auditing of books that took hours every year. And so there's all sorts of stuff like that. So they did away with it and now the town's administering it. I don't know who actually in town is doing the administration of it. I forgot to ask him that question. Um, but he gave me some things that we should consider. Like when somebody buys a lot, we should we should require them to put in corner markers for the plot. Yeah. Um, because that way that prevents somebody else from accidentally getting buried in that. If there's markers there, you know somebody else owns it. Yeah, that's that's a cost. Thing. So not, not everybody's gonna like that and not everybody can afford to do that. So we need to talk about stuff like that and whether we wanna do it. Um, he also told me that um, for burials, some towns have a resident price and some have a non-resident price. I think we should do that. 
that's something that you know you don't necessarily want people coming from out of town to be buried here if they don't have any connection to Thurman because that just fills up our cemetery and you know local people won't have a place someday so there's things like that that we have to think about and talk about and whether we do it as a town board or whether we reinstitute the cemetery commission how we do it I don't know but we have to talk about those things and figure out how to do it so but I think I I am advocating for getting this survey done because I think it's a smart thing to do I think it will resolve a lot to do with the boundaries it will resolve a lot to do with who's buried where and who owns what lots or plots I should say mm -hmm. um, and it would give us a good base map so that whoever we task in the future to administer all of this stuff will have accurate information to work from. And you've decided on uh, the amount of money charged for the cemetery and the amount of money charged to a out-of-town person to a resident in Thurman? I, I haven't even talked to anybody on the board about that. I just talked that to... That was a consideration yes. on the committee before, and you had to buy your we get ours, Nancy B. Hill was in the Tom Kirk position, and she never signed anybody's, now that's where you're going to run into some problems, yeah. she never signed anyone's uh, amount of money that she gave her, uh, or the certificate, because I got mine, and it was 203, and uh, I paid $120 at the time, and then $2 What David Alexander told me is in Warrensburg, they charge a flat fee of $700 for a plot. They don't distinguish between resident or non-resident, but other towns do. Um, he mentioned another town, and I didn't write down the name of it. They charge $200 for a plot for a resident and $500 for a non-resident. So, I mean, it sounds like we're open to do what we want with this, but, you know. I think we should have a resident and non-resident. I tend to agree with that. Didn't somebody just come in and buy a plot for a hundred and something dollars, right? Nine hundred fifty dollars for two plots. Um, yeah. We had no choice. We just it, they needed the burial plot, and the two and I kind of. Is it in the Reynolds Cemetery? Yeah. 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 It was up there. Yeah. So it's four twenty-five. That's what each four twenty-five yeah. each or no? I think it was nine fifty for nine fifty for two. Yeah. Can I say something to me? Sure, about yeah, your sure. certificates here, Joyce? I was going through the Goodnow and the Baker family, and I found index cards where they had just, she had signed her name and put lot, the lot numbers, and, and she signed saying paid. So how many of them are out there also? It's very scary. You don't know. You know? Yeah, and the other thing is, as you read these, Ed, yeah, um, there's a thing in there that says that if they don't pay the fee for three years, the property reverts back to the town. Yeah, the work we're right only there. talking two dollars a year, but if you go three years and you don't pay your two dollars, yeah. your plot goes back yeah. to the town. So, yeah, the rules you know, we've got to talk history. about all this yeah. stuff yeah. and figure out how to do it. But there's a lot, there's a lot of different out yeah. there. That index card. Well, when I, I first started coming to meetings in 2003 or 2004, mm -hmm. you, if you were a resident of the town of Thurman, heard that each resident was entitled to two free lots. Yeah. They used so, to so pay. Those are they used to pay. Well, I know. Yeah. They had to pay for those. I have to receive. That have to be a rule that was changed. If that's a rule which we don't know, yeah, right. that's somewhere. It's not in. It's not yeah. on this list. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they paid. I know they paid, but I've got the receipts. And um, all of a sudden, they're not free, you know. Why? Well, they go free last time. Mary? I'm sorry? It's a little over two acres. Yeah, yeah. 2.03. But, I mean, something else you guys kind of touched on in your conversation there is that um, 
uh, shoot, that was, uh, mm -hmm. oh, as far as paying for the maintenance of it, mm -hmm. uh, Warrensburg has a big advantage over us. They have a $400,000 endowment mm -hmm. they turned over to the town mm -hmm. that covers the maintenance of that cemetery. Yeah. We're paying for it with taxpayer dollars. Yeah. So we, we don't have that advantage. No. So, I mean, if we're gonna sell plots, I mean, we need to do something that makes sense with all this. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. We've gotta talk about all these issues, but I think the first issue is figure out who's buried where and what plots are available, which ones right. are sold. Right. Yeah. And who we already gotta, owns them and we don't know. Right. Yeah. The main, so the, the main line to the know, whole cemetery to make sure yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I do so know right, that right. there is a lot of corner markers in there already. Pat and I found lots. Okay. And they're in the row. You can count the row. They just need some guidance to get them on paper. Yeah. But they're there. They're under the grass. We found them. Even we found some old wooden ones too. Yeah. They're still and there. If it's any consolation, David Alexander told me we're not the only ones wrestling with this. Cemeteries okay. all over the country yeah. are wrestling with the same problems but, we are. But there's so a good start. We got a good base that we can start with in that yeah. far corner because that's where they start and they progress. I guess at this point, mm -hmm. I would make offer make a motion and offer a resolution to um, accept the uh, the proposal from uh, Dara Land Surveying to have the survey work done at the at the Reynolds Cemetery. We could eventually go on to the okay Yes. I don't know. So I think I'm all that's about undecided. It. Okay, I made the motion, but did you have something, Mary, you wanted to add? Yeah, that does seem like I suspect if there was work like that done, do you have any idea if it was something that was paid for by the town or if it was some, somebody helped and marked out? Or? Somebody helped, right, Mark? Yeah, somebody yeah. helped working with Mark okay. at that point in time. Do you know who if they were a licensed surveyor? Or? I have no idea who okay. it was. No, you have to talk to him. Okay. And he may not even answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Just calling you to just accept this bid because Good, good point. I mean, according to our purchasing policy for professional services, mm -hmm. what's the limit that we need to go out for a request for proposals? Do you know? I can go get it. It's I, I, mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, I, I don't know if this is right, but I think it's five thousand dollars or more. It's it's like a I don't know. Yeah. I just caught. Yeah, and I, I think this is under the threshold for that, and I and I do believe it's very reasonable. I I think just having a, a like a one acre lot survey for a house is, you know, more than that. More than that. So, yeah. you know, I, I think this is reasonable and- well, I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. I'm just saying that, and you might put it up a bit, and you might be well, the lowest person there. Yeah. And I don't argue that. I'm just offering you be cautious. I, I don't disagree with that. I think that the time that it would take for us to go out for requests for proposals, we might save a little bit of money, but we're going to delay getting this done. And maybe this isn't the right approach, but I, I guess my motion stands that I would like to get it done. Oh, I so, don't. I don't argue with that at all. Which price are you talking about? So my motion was to accept this entire proposal. Three thousand two hundred sixty dollars total. Yes, the sixteen hundred thirty for the boundary survey and the other. 
items one through four on the scope of services, and then the additional 1630 for item five on the scope of services. So, I'm just going to put you now if you want me. The total being uh, $3,260. If they need to do any additional work, we would have to approve that separately. Okay. I just want to make sure I got the right amount in there. If you're, yeah. If you're yep, $3,260. Well, I talked to someone at Real Property about this boundary line here. And in February of 2023, that road frontage, that boundary was changed based on a survey from 1948. It went from 1.44 acres to 2.03, and the road frontage was increased to 530 feet. So whatever was marked there, we're, I can't be confident that where those markers are mm -hmm. is accurate. I am in favor of having that survey. We need to know where the, where the boundaries the are. Boundary. And there is a right of way at the edge of that, which, you know, some people think someone's buried there, we don't know. It's really important that we do know if, if someone's there and where that exactly is. Having the survey done will clear, yeah. clear up a lot of that stuff. Well, Lexi, Lexi said you could just have the one line surveyed, but for how much money it is, it might be better to do the whole thing and we'll have the survey and we'll know exactly where it is. And that way the committee, or whoever's going to work on this, has a start, knows exactly the boundaries. They'll be freshly marked, and I think it, it would be smart to do that. Okay, so I've made the motion. All right, I'll second it. Got a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 It's all for, all for you. Okay. Okay. What's the name of the surveyor? It's Dara Land Surveying, D A R R A H Land Surveying. D A R R A H Land Surveying. Land Surveying. The proposal is dated August 1st, 2023. 2023. August 1st. August 1st. Um, the other thing I'd like to let people know is we do have an archery class. It starts this Friday. It's a little late notice, but I just got confirmation yesterday about the instructors. It's for the Thurman youth up on the rec field with our own equipment. And it's for children that are between 8 and 8 and up, so whatever they want to do. It's from 3.30 to 4.30. And there's a flyer on the door, and the flyer is now on the website as well. And the other thing I have to hand out is it's um, just about getting to be budget time. Mm -hmm. So the department heads will all have their estimate forms by the end of the month, and then we're going to have to start scheduling um, our meetings to start going over the budget. See, the tentative will be filed with the town clerk by September 30th. So at our next meeting in September, that's when we'll start scheduling our workshops. I do have one thing that I would like to go into executive session for. It's regarding um, possible pending litigation. So, does anybody want to bring that to the floor? Ed made the motion. Ed made the motion. Okay. Did you hear what we're going in for? Yeah, you're going into uh, executive session to discuss a possible pending litigation. Great. Right. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It won't take long at all. Okay.
Cemetery House. They have a mall property. 